So uh, does colour theory matter? Yeah, 100%. I think it does. I think... Um, it, I think it's a really crucial part of of painting miniatures. I th- it's like the best way for me to explain it is it's like it, it really makes painting a lot easier by having an understanding of it. The ability to choose a color that you know is going to work with the inherent color that you're using it does help to just build a, a scheme or build like a, an overall sort of like fi- finished result with a miniature. Really, it really helps with that. Um, you don't necessarily have to have like uh, color theory is such a such an in depth. A uh, topic with loads of different types of color relationships and loads of different types of um, uh, of things which are involved within it. Like you know, but I think there's a core competency understanding what contrasting and what harmonious colors are. I think that gives a- any painter the ability to make informed choices when it comes to colors. Mm. I-, I think sometimes if you if you don't have a, a-, a minimal understanding of it. I think not so much uh, the actual sort of what you end up with as a finished result, because at the end of the day, it's painting miniatures is art. If you want to have two colors next to each other, you can do that's fine. Um, but I think just just for having an understanding of it, so that it makes the choosing of the colors that you're using easier. And I think that's the thing where you're going to save time, and I think that's where you're going to be be better off by having an understanding. We've all been there. We've been painting a miniature, and we're like, oh, I don't really know what color to use on this because it's this color. Having that minimal understanding of color theory that allows you to go well this color works with it or this color is a is a harmony to the complement and it will still work because it harmonizes with what the complementary color is of this object's opposing color that just helps massively to then just make choices so much easier for you as a painter Mm. i think it's something that i've like kind of glossed over a bit not really like intentionally but beyond the like sort of general abstract understanding of like you know opposing colors and the primary colors and whatnot it's not really something yeah. that I've, I, I don't want to like sit and do homework when i'm doing no, no, my I, get that. I, mean? I get that um for me it's never really felt like much of a roadblock either though no no i agree i i, I you know and, and some some people will go all their lives painting and just choosing colors or whatever and not really use it at all whatsoever but for for and again, there are loads of different color relationships out there. So you obviously the the, the a triadic relationship is the obvious one. Is the triangular shape one on there with with red light. and primary colors is a really good example. Obviously, red, blue, and and, and yellow. Um, but I think the other thing to to bear in mind as well is that by having an understanding of it, it just means that when when you when you do have that color scheme that you're a bit unsure of, you you don't necessarily have to spend so much time just I mean an hour about stuff, and you can pick with confidence because you know it's going to work. Mm. Um, and also, I would say that I think that that color schemes that do have uh, a very minimal understanding of color theory behind them, they do tend to be a bit work better on the models as well, and they yeah. do the models do look a bit. I don't want to use the word natural. That's not really the way to me to explain it, but they do. They just do look like they work i think that's one of the, the the best way for me to explain it um sometimes when you when you throw caution to the wind and don't don't use sort of color theory to an extent or when you just haphazardly put colors on in the vain hope that they're going to work together that's when sometimes maybe a bit of frustration which leads to other things that we've spoken yeah. about comes in um i think with me i've kind of like any, any sort of color theory knowledge that i have i think it's kind of been learned on accident because it's not so much a, like when i sit down and i'm like painting the cloth i'm like oh what color is going to perfectly complement it I don't think for me it's as much a like I whip out my color wheel and I think about it because I like I said I don't really have that complex of an understanding of it. No, but I think through experience I kind of just naturally know based yeah, on yeah. the paints that I have what yeah. ones will work together. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I, I like again. I'm not sitting here from a point of understanding every iota of color theory. But no, I, of course, believe, yeah, me, yeah. believe me, like you know, there's still loads that I that I would need to spend ages looking into and researching and understanding. And, and I, I, I really work with when choosing colors, I really work with that, that sort of harmonious and also complementary use of color. They're the, that that's like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to it. And again, there's analogous, there's the triadic, there's loads of different, different types of color relationships and, and, and sort of like uh, thing that you can use. But, um, but really just understanding that if I use this color, the opposite color on the color wheel is this, mm. and the color to the left or right of it is the harmonious color of that contrasting color. So, and, and that's helped with loads of decisions through, through my painting over the years because it just gives me that point of origin and going, right, okay, well, I've painted a cloth a neutral color, which is this. The armor color is this color. So I could shade theoretically the armor with this, or I could shade the cloth with this, and it'll work with that armor color because it's a harmonious or complementary color. Having that, minimal understanding of the vast topic that is color theory just i find just gives your models a bit of a leg up and also as well just gives you a bit more and it's it's confidence you know we've all been there in their early early days you know painting where we're unsure what paint paint to pick up or what to use whatever it really does help with that Um, well as someone who's like uh maybe looking to start a new army and they don't have that understanding 
as someone who sees a lot of projects, obviously with Siege, where do you think that people go wrong the most when trying to pick a color scheme for their army? I think the planning of any project is probably one of the most important things and color choices, I would say, is a, a very big percentage of that within within planning a, a project or planning an army. Um, I think one of the things to, to that people, where people go wrong is that they have their favorite colors and they just go, right, I just want to paint the army in my favorite colors and not considering that this color, although albeit not your favorite color, might work better with this based on color theory. Hmm. Um, there's no reason. Again, I don't. I don't want to sound like the, the the miniature painting police here. You can put on. You can put on <laughs> like you could put on whatever colours you want on your miniatures. That's perfectly fine. But I think for the minimal amount of investment it takes to understand that very brief uh, brief overview of colour theory, it will just help you hugely as a painter. And I think some of the biggest areas where people do go wrong is that they do just pick their favourite colours because it's their favourite colour, and they'll put two colours together and then wonder why it doesn't the model doesn't inherently look as good. Um, the other thing I would say is that like sometimes people are picking colors that are, that are very very close to each other as well, and it, and then and and what happens is the like you need contrast is really important on miniatures, um, because it gives them a weight of depth. It gives them the, that 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 look that you need to just just pick out all those tiny little details on the model. If it's a very close palette or the colors are very very close to each other, you 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 kind of disregard a lot of the little details yeah, and things it becomes hard to model. pull off that because the silhouette is uh, much more blended i suppose it's harder to see the details if you've got like a green model with green cloth yeah and then the gun's green yeah it's... i mean if, if you're going for if you're going for a camouflage model that'd be perfect yeah but I but, guess so, but, yeah. but but like i i personally wouldn't advocate